Constantine the First, also known as Constantine the Great, was the first Roman Emperor to be down with Christianity. He even started an evolution of the Roman Empire to adopt Christian culture, ultimately the catalyst for the growth of Western medieval culture in Byzantine. Constantine was the first son of army officer and Caesar Fla <laughs> Flavius Valerius Constantius, and the much more easily pronounced Helena. Constantine even attended a Latin-speaking institution, and he was real smart. He gives sermons composed in Latin and pronounced in Greek. He was probably a real teacher's pet, but he was real smart. Constantine picked up Christianity on the streets and in court circles, and it was heavily enforced in eastern parts of the empire. It was also suspected that his family might have had Christians in there too that influenced his Christian side. His career and conversion into Christianity is filled with really long names and it gets kind of long, so I'll try to keep this simple. Constantine was in a series of civil wars with Maxentius. Maxentius' dad, Maximian, is rejected by his son and joins Constantine. He tries to betray Constantine in a cliche bad guy plot twist reveal. Constantine's too smart for that crap and makes Max's son commit suicide publicly. While he's on a roll, he creates an alliance with Licinius and they gang up on Max. At this point, Constantine is the Emperor of the West and Licinius was the Emperor of the East. They beat Max and win the war, but they don't get along very well, so Constantine goes to war with him and ends up just becoming the Emperor of the East and West when he beats Licinius. Thanks for the help, idiot. With Constantine being the Emperor, he's able to convert the people of Rome into Christians. Everyone thought he was a badass and they made plenty of statues in his glory. Wait, is that just a baby hanging from his leg? Who's, whose kid is that? Where's, their, where's that kid's parents? Who is that? While we were talking about statues of Constantine, we're going to look at this huge bust of him. Back in the day, any emperor who was anyone had statues of themselves. It was an effective way to show power and push your image onto the public. Look at his high cheekbones, his well-kept hair, the Roman nose, and butt chin. Judging by the looks of his statue, Constantine fancied himself a ladies' man, or at least a beach stud. But slow down ladies, he's saving it for marriage. Let's just compare Constantine's bust with this one of Licinius on first impressions alone. Licinius looks less approachable and he kind of looks like a potato. In contrast to Constantine's Baywatch face, he's got a much saggier physique with a bonus chin. Time to go to the gym, buddy. I know I'm judging Licinius on his looks alone, but that's what these statues were made for. It was propaganda for the public using your image, and the first self-impressions were everything back then. I wouldn't be surprised if Constantine asked the sculptor to put a bit of Botox in his face. And looking at different sculptures of the same person, you can see a level of consistency being lost. Look at this coin of Licinius, he's visually represented differently here than in the bust. He also kind of looks like a creepy anime character too. It's hard to say whether or not this bust of Constantine is part of a bigger statue, but if it is, I had a team of experts digitally create an accurate representation of what it would have looked like. 